Hey, today we're going to take apart the brand new Xbox One Covert Forces controller. This is the first controller by Microsoft to have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and some updates to some other electronics in there. So we're going to go through a highlight, some of the changes that we noticed, kind of be a more deeper level of a open box. So we're going to start with the regular Xbox One controller. We'll go ahead and get this one open. So we can give you something to compare all these to. If you haven't seen one of our opening videos, well, this is kind of how it goes. We're also going to be using our Battle Beaver Customs Premium Toolkit in this video. To do the opening on the controller, we're going to use our Security T8 screwdriver. So we'll take off the side caps, the battery covers. Go ahead and take out these five Security T8 screws. And what we're going to do, we just want to go ahead and expose the electronic boards in here, get them out of the controller, so we can do some side-by-side -side comparisons. Just give you guys an idea of what Microsoft actually did and didn't update in this controller. So we'll discard all the parts that we won't be using in this video. Alright, so we're going to desolder our rumble motors. out of the way. So this is our exposed mid plate. Now we need to switch and get our T6 driver out of here. These new screwdrivers are a lot nicer than the ones we have we sell as our basic toolkit. These are actually going to be built more for the people that do this as a hobby or you know if you're that one unlucky friend that does all the fixes for all your other friends you'll need the better set of screwdrivers so make sure that they help pay for that so we'll take our main board out set this off to the side all the tools in the video can be found on our website battlebeavercustoms.com be sure to check us out there and also follow us on twitter at battlebeaverc Go ahead and remove the multiple T6 small screws that hold in our secondary board, slave board or daughter board, whatever you would like to call it. Basically this board doesn't support any of the main electronics, but it does house your USB connector along with all your button inputs, some of your button inputs. We'll get this out. Kind of rushing through this. If you need to see a more in-depth teardown video, check out our YouTube channel. Plenty more on there. So have our daughter board. We'll go ahead and set this mid plate off to the side. We'll be talking more about this, I'm sure. Get this out. Go ahead and clean up our screws real quick. All right, so now we have our new Covert Forces Xbox One controller. So let you guys know, we have not opened one of these yet. So you're gonna get the actual impressions that we have of this controller out of the box. So here we have it. The coloring on the shell itself is actually very nice. Um, it's gonna be a standard screen print shell from Microsoft, just like all the rest. It's Pretty durable. The thumbstick tension still feels to be that stock 65 grams. So as they poured more money in, they felt to ignore that once again. Uh, not too impressed there. The new bumpers, they lack that loud click. This is an update that they did, so we'll see what that looks like on the inside. You can actually see the surround moving side to side, which would let me know that these are not pivoting at this top anymore they're actually attached on the inside so not not the greatest there but 
you can actually click them from any spot up here, which isn't bad. So we may actually just go in there and put in a little bit better switch down the road. Have our new warranty sticker from Microsoft. Looks a little different. It's a missing barcode or something here. Not that we're all too concerned about warranties at this point. Same thing here. We're just going to pop the side caps off. Everything so far seems to be about the same fit as far as the plastics would be concerned. And I'm skipping over the, the big thing, which is here at the bottom, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, that's the big improvement on this controller. They had used their adapter to switch from 3.5 to 2.5 to everything in between. They have had a lot of issues with this proprietary connector. It'll actually shear completely off the board. We've seen it time and time again. So was, they're long overdue to do this. This is what PlayStation has done from the beginning. Lift off the faceplate. Just go ahead and turn this over. It looks like everything on the faceplate, as far as markings are concerned, that this will still be the same. Um, so as far as our replacement parts, I think we're going to be safe there. Thumbstick still the same. Go ahead and pull this mid plate out. And it looks like this mic port actually is part, you can see how it bevels into the controller right here. So we'll pry that controller up and then it peels back. So this rear shell, the first thing I notice here, there's a new bracket. A new connector here on the bottom. So to compare it to the old one, you can see the addition of that support structure. Um, we'll find out what that's for here in a second. Other than that, everything looks fairly similar. And here's where we can get into our big changes, is this board itself. So let's go ahead and get the rumbles out of the way. The first thing I see right off the bat is a very large shield on top of the wireless chip. So Microsoft has a proprietary wireless protocol that they use. You'll notice there'll never be a third party product that has a wireless functionality to it. That's because Microsoft prides in the ownership of that. Um, but what we did notice is had a lot of interference on the Xbox One, a lot of disconnect issues. So. All they did, they put a shield on top of those components to hopefully cut down on some RF there. Uh, the trigger, so how these triggers work, these are actually linear hull sensors. They are, they run off a magnet, so the stronger the magnet field over it, the more uh, current they allow to pass through the resistor. I can get too technical on this but these still work exactly the same. They still look like the same exact sensor, uh, same setup, capacitor under it. They did drop a resistor capacitor stack that went on the input side, so that's interesting to see. The thumbstick mechanisms look to be simplified a little bit as far as their resistors and capacitors go. If you look at the right side, before we had a stack of four here, two over here. Now we have three in the top, two on the bottom. So there's some definite huge changes. So a couple other things that we notice here um, is the main chip. This main chip you can tell just size wise. It's a lot smaller form factor and you can see all these silver points around. These are what we call test points. They're very easy to solder onto, to allow you to put components onto them, to test functionality in a controller. You can actually take and probe these a lot easier. They're not covered, so each board has a, an essentially an epoxy coating over the board um, with the test points being exposed. So we have more exposed points and paths in here, which is very interesting. Um, we have some speculation there, probably won't share too much of it. But that's definitely some future proofing. You notice everything looks fairly 
different. So let's go ahead and take this main board out of this controller and let's see what this new headphone jack looks like. And again, all the screws are the same. Um, so far it looks like the trigger caps are the same. It's good. This snaps off the same. And here we see these are your points for your headphone port, which is interesting that it's not actually soldered onto the board. It just sticks in place. So this mid plate obviously is different to have the inclusion of the mount for that headphone port. Something to notice here are the amount of points that this headphone jack supports. So this first one typically is gonna be your ground point. Usually they run two. And from there you would have one, two, three, and these back two are possibly the same four, which would be stereo left, right, obviously your ground, and then your microphone. So this will support all right, had a couple camera issues, so we're back. So again, we have this headphone jack, talked about it supporting left, right, microphone, and ground. It's full stereo. But what we particularly like about it is that it's not hard soldered onto the board. So with gamers, everything is extreme. They wind up blowing small components like this. So you could essentially just pull this out. Once we can find the replacement from our suppliers, take this thing, drop a new one in. The only hard part is going to be finding that a port with a beveled edge, but it's not impossible. We do have our the new main board here. What we did notice, our two main connectors, our J5 and J6 connectors, seem to be the same size as the old one. So this is the old mid plate, or the old daughter board. They snap together. Um, while we were realigning our video equipment, we actually tested and these work together. So you could make a hybrid controller essentially with some of these features on there. You'll notice, I don't know if it'll show up on the video, but where the microphone port goes in, there's a very large capacitor here. So you probably won't be able to maintain that functionality, but they do interchange. It's uh, just a very unique observation that may not even be useful as we go through building and replacing and repairing these things. So set that back to the side. So again, our main board, the inclusion of that, we'll see a lot more of the resistors and capacitors move to one section of this board. Um, we notice they still kept diode 14, which is open and not used. They added a test point for B, which before we just had used the top half of diode 14. Uh, they moved a few of these around, realigned some things. So overall, it looks like a lot of aesthetic changes. We saw this a lot with the 360s. They went through five different board revisions. Um, I don't think they changed any of the grounding. I don't think we're changing from a common ground to like a matrix setup like we did on the 360. Assuming that will come at some point, I do notice that they added physical resistors here at the front for their proprietary connector. Um, we're not sure exactly what that's trying to filter out, but those are being used on every lead, which is also another interesting observation. The actual thumbstick mechanisms, this is a thing that we deal with every day here at Battle Beaver. Uh, they are using the exact same mechanism. We've heard people speculating they're gonna try to change attention on these. These are the same mech. They're coming from Alps USA or Alps overseas. They are gonna be the same. The only difference are the markings for the batch numbers, um, which are essentially useless to us. Which is unfortunate, we see this plastic clip right here. This clip, we saw this so much in Advanced Warfare, where you had to do a lot of the exo-boosting functions. And essentially when you're going left or right and clicking, when you'd click to the right, you'd push this direction, and this part of the cage would wind up breaking that plastic part out, pretty much rendering your left stick useless or very it would function very oddly. You'd have some dead spots and some drifting. So we're still gonna have the same issues there. Uh, J5 and J6, we're gonna run through and we'll actually test these points later on. I'm willing to bet they kept most of them exactly the same. So let's go ahead and get this other daughter board or sub board out. 
And again, we talked about the bumpers being a little different. Um, before you'll see how these had pivot points here. These were the actual parts that swung and hit your bumper switches from the top, right, the sideways. We don't have that on the new board. They are actually connected to this filter here. So this is all now kind of one piece. So I'm assuming if I pry up on here, like I have in the past, and pull this forward, it's gonna release everything in one spot. So here we have the new mid plate section we're going back to the old school 360 ways of life because well it worked and these come apart and I can see the holes in there and try not to shatter this but that part came off there we go so that comes apart here's your new bumpers we have these two very thin parts that are going to actually hit your switches, so I'm not, I mean, we can see how flimsy, flimsy those are, so if you wind up dropping your controller, there's a good chance those will crack and shatter, um, so we'll work very quickly on getting replacements for those. Your new home button surround is all obviously going to be a little different in shape with those two points to hold that in place, so these will be the hardest part for our builder currently, are going to be having to leave those bumpers stock. Our sync button still just drops in. And here you can see the new tack switches. And they have, looks like a guide here, which would be for that thin part of the bumper to go in and hit. So we'll go ahead and replace, or go ahead and remove this daughter board. Take a little bit better look at it. So all in all, this controller seems like some very minor updates from the user end. The addition of all those test points could be for some later functionality, testing. Um, theoretically, test points are very good for troubleshooting and repairs. Microsoft doesn't do very much for repairs, so I'm not sure as to why those are there. You'll notice on like a PlayStation 4 controller, they pretty much know they're never gonna repair that thing. So they just don't use a lot of that. So this seems to be stuck in a little bit tighter. Looks like we have all of our screws out. Take a look at this side. It looks like this is going to be from those bumper switches. Give it a nice little pry. And those come off. And it looks like we have these little plastic shims that were sitting behind our bumper switches. That's probably to keep them from bending, which was a huge issue on the 360 controller. Is if you'd hit that bumper hard enough, you'd actually bend that metal cage back, lose your bumper support. So the rubber part's still the same, if anybody cares. And here's a daughter board. Looking from the front, I would say most of the buttons are the same. It looks like they almost literally just flip the switches around. Um, granted, they had to rerun circuitry and stuff, but that's from the form factor just staring at it, that's what it looks like. All these switches here on the front, or all the components on the front are the same. Again, more inclusions of open diode points and test points that were, again, not on the old controller. Um, look at some resistors and such. Oh, this is really interesting. They eliminated, you had two infrared lights here on the front that supposedly talked between your controller and your connect. Um, the reason I notice these is I see here a marking showing, these are essentially polarity markings. We see these a lot on LEDs, since they are pole specific, they have to sit on the board a certain direction. So I see markings on both of them at the top. There's actually one here at the bottom as well, but there's no component soldered in here. So they eliminated those IR ports for some reason. Uh, be interesting to find out what it, they plan to do with those. So I have these, these switches. They actually sound very familiar. All right, so going back to these, again, you know, those IRs are gone. So we'll see, I don't know if that's gonna if maybe they'll announce that this controller is built specifically for people that don't use their Kinect as much, 
or if that functionality ever actually did anything. The D-pad switches are exactly the same. You'll get the same feedback out of those. The bumper switches have the same response, which is weird. I guess how they're set up. We just weren't getting that feedback from them as I would have liked to see. It may just be how these are hitting them. They'll be kind of difficult to trim, but we'll check on those more as we get into it. Uh, looking at the back, I would say most everything here seems pretty similar. I don't see any glaring differences other than some new markings, couple new test points. Uh, that really looks about to be it. So we're going to dig in a little bit deeper. We're going to go identify some components here in the shop. But essentially this controller looks to function exactly the same. The bumpers are, you know, a little different on the inside, which may or may not be better. We'll find out with some use. Uh, we'll know very quickly when we start to get some repairs in. The new 3.5 mic area seems like we should be able to fit this into our existing shells. We will go in and see if we can't duplicate that hole. If we can, we can offer this in a colored shell before our suppliers start producing these with the hole. So we'll do our diligence there. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us by email, sales at battlebeavercustoms.com. Definitely catch us on Twitter at battlebeaverc. You can get any latest of our updates from there. Our DMs are actually open, so feel free to shoot us a message. It may take us a little while to get back to you, but it'll be in the queue. So until next time, guys, this is Chris with Battle Beaver Customs.